So let's look at our binary tree class. And we're just going to add a couple of things to this. Um, some things I've already added for you. We still need a root, just like we had for our arbitrary tree. So that's, that's no different. Um, let's look at how we're going to change the node. So I scroll down to line 36 here. And let's take a look at what the node is going to look like instead. The node is going to be very straightforward. In one way, it's going to be similar to the node we had in our arbitrary tree. We're going to have a instance variable called data, which will reference the element. How it's different is we're not going to have an array list. Instead, we're going to have two instance variables, one called left and one called right, each of which reference a node. So now we're, we're more efficient. We don't have to create new array lists. We don't have to add children. Instead, we just initialize the left and the right reference to the left and the right node, and we're good to go. Okay, so this is what simplifies our binary tree compared to the arbitrary tree we wrote earlier. So here we have three different constructors. The first one constructs an empty tree. <coughs> this dot root equals null. We'll set it, we'll be explicit, um, even though it's initialized to null. The second constructor constructs a tree with one node and no children. Okay, so this is gonna look familiar to the constructor we wrote a moment ago. We're gonna need to make a new node. And whenever we make a new node, we need to initialize every instance variable of that node. So we're gonna set data to the data that was passed as a parameter. And since we have no children, we will set left to null and we will set right to null. Very similar to the code we wrote previously for our arbitrary tree. Finally, our third constructor specifies data for the root and a left subtree and a right subtree. Um, these left and right subtrees could be empty trees, but they're at least trees. They can't be null. Uh, so this is close to like we did here. We still need to initialize this root data. I could copy these four lines of code and paste them down here, but it's more efficient to say this parentheses root data, which you may remember from AP Computer Science, to call this constructor and have it run through all this code for me. And then I just have to deal with the left and right trees. So this dot root dot left, left refers to a node, not a tree. I can't code it like this. It doesn't compile. Left is of type binary tree, whereas this is a node. I have to say left dot root. And then right dot root. Confusing trees with nodes much like how we can confuse linked lists with nodes is one of the most common pitfalls we run into in this chapter. We got to keep our trees, our public data structure, separate from our nodes, our internal data structure. All right, this is a good place to stop. We've got our binary tree class. Um, we will pick this up again tomorrow in the context of a decision tree and then do some practice programming activities.